Hey guys, Patch Dre here. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about five things I think everyone should know about the daemon. I'm specifically going to attach to each of these five things uh, kind of a an action step or something I think you can do or should do potentially if you want to come into contact with your daemon. Because um, I want I want this content to be something that potentially can change the way you think or change the way you do things so that it can have a positive effect in your life. And I think there is potentially no greater positive effect than learning to hear the voice of your inner secret unconscious companion, the, the inner self that's been there trying to guide you. So, uh, so with each one of these things, listen for the action step. Uh, number one, uh, the daemon communicates through dreams. And uh, I've talked about this a little bit, that uh, there, there's lots of ways the daemon can communicate with you. It can, it can, you may hear yours audibly. It may actually speak to you, or you may see synchronicities kind of lining up before you and opportunities. Um, and so those are communications. But um, the easiest way, I think, is to, before you go to bed at night, if you have a question, ask a question. And then uh, allow your daemon to answer that question in your dreams. And, and so a, a daemon's not going to answer every question. You know, if you ask it, like, where are the keys to a free Ferrari? It's probably not going to have an answer for you for that. Uh, but if you can ask questions that kind of line up with keeping you on the path of your purpose and your life and what you should do next. Uh, those are those are the kind of questions daemons are really great at answering. Um, but we know dreams are symbolic. So if you ask a question, the daemon's not going to answer concretely in your dream. It's going to give you a uh, metaphoric, symbolic answer. And so it's really important that you learn to analyze your dreams and find the answers to your questions inside of those metaphors. And that's something I've talked a little bit about on this channel. I want to kind of get into it more to make sure that tool set is available to people who want to do it. But uh, for what you can do right now is uh, just start asking a question, one simple question every night before you go to bed. And uh, you can ask it in your mind. You don't have to ask it out loud, but make it really clear. This is a question for my daemon and I want there to be an answer in my dreams. And then anything you dream at that night, uh, first chance when you wake up, even if you just wake up to pee in the middle of the night, you gotta record it in some way. You gotta write it down in a notebook, write it down in the notes tab on your phone, do a voice memo uh, describing the dream, because dreams, um, they the part of your brain that dreams is connected to your short-term memory. So dreams, that's where they live. They live in your short-term memory. They don't make it to their your long-term memory unless you force them there. Um, so every night, ask a question and then write down what you dream about. And as this channel goes on, we'll get into how to interpret those effectively. Uh, the second thing I want, I think people should know about the daemon is you can say no to your daemon. Um, you know, it, it presents you with opportunities. Um, it gives you uh, things that you could do, uh, things you could focus on. Um, we, we've talked a little bit in past videos about uh, how the daemon kind of appears as the author, the invisible author of your life. And so that might lead you to think, oh, well, this it's all predetermined. There's nothing I can do about it. It's, it's, it's lining everything up for me and I'm just walking through it. But I think the last video I did, which was about Aleister Crowley and True Will and Albert North Whitehead and Process Thought kind of points out the, the way I think the daemon works. The daemon presents you with lures these lures are opportunities to make a choice. And if you make the right choice, then it keeps you on the path the daemon has laid out before you. But you can absolutely say, no, I'm not going to do it. You, you may be presented with an opportunity to do something uh, causative and creative. And you can say, no, I'm not interested, I'm not doing it. And I, I think uh, the example we get from most of the world is, is people saying no to the invitation, the lure of their daemon. And so if you do say no, you're, you're in, you get a lot of company. You can say no, or you can say yes. And when you say yes, um, I think that builds that relationship and it makes it that much easier to hear the daemon in the future. And, and so your, your uh, action steps for that is learn to recognize the lures, learn to recognize uh, when you're being offered an opportunity, 
and say yes as much as you can and realize, you know, you don't have to. And, and if you say no, the daemon's not going to get mad, but um, I, I think your ability to hear it will diminish over time. So that's why it's important to say yes, and it's important to learn to recognize opportunities that you're being presented with to follow your passions. Uh, and so that's your action step. Uh, the third thing I think everyone should know about the daemon is the daemon has always been with you. Uh, from birth, it exists. It, it comes into this world at the same moment that you come into this world. Now, when you're a kid, um, you may not recognize the daemon. You you aren't really, you're clearly probably not thinking about it, so you're not looking for it. You may have never heard of it. I didn't hear about it until I was in my 40s. Um, and And so... Just because it's there doesn't mean like you can see it uh, or you can feel its presence. But, and this is a big part of um, the book The Soul's Code uh, by James Hillman, where he, he shows examples of historic figures, public figures, who if you look at their early life, you could see the life they went on to live, the thing they went on to become famous for or really good at was presenting itself to them signs of itself all through their childhood and so that's the invitation to you that's the that's the thing that you can do right now is just assume yes my daemon has always been there so if i think i know what my purpose i'm being driven towards is if i think i know the thing that i'm passionate about were there signs when i was a kid uh were there things that I gravitated towards were the things that like stories my parents always tell about me. You know, when you were little, you always did this and this and this and this. Is that a sign that your daemon was active at an early age? And so look back over your life, try to see the fingerprints, try to see the footprints. You know, it's like that, uh, that Christian poem about, you know, Jesus, why are there only one set of footprints? Oh, that's what I was carrying you. So uh, look for the second set of footprints. Those are the footprints of the daemon. Um, the fourth thing I want to, that I think everybody should know about the daemon, is you won't always recognize it the first time you look for it. And here's what I mean. It, when we go about, the, we decide, you know, I'm going to find my purpose. I'm going to hear the voice of the daemon in my life. And we start looking and doing the research and very often we'll come up with something and say, oh, this is what I was meant to do. And we'll start putting all our effort into it. And then after a few weeks or a few months, uh, we'll kind of peter out or we'll get discouraged or something will happen. And um, it kind of throws us for a loop because we're like, ah, I thought that was it. I thought that was my thing. And I have done this so many times in my life. And this there's a whole one of the second I think it was the second video I ever made about the day it was on the topic of circumambulation and that was something Jung talked about where he said you know progress self-development isn't a straight line instead you start out here where you're trying to get it right here and you start circling it and, and the circles get smaller and smaller and smaller until finally you're there but uh when you're here when you're starting out you're pretty far away from it and um we as people we get a lot of things wrong and so we don't need to beat ourselves up for being bad at figuring out what our purpose is. That's a pretty big thing. And so it would make sense that it would sometimes be harder to figure that out at first. And so uh, your, your action step here for this step is be easy on yourself. Give yourself time to figure this out. You know, that, and, and that's why it's sometimes uh, making figure like the way living in a capitalist society, everybody's like, you know, find your passion and that's your job and that's how you'll make money and become, you know, become super rich. And um, I think that's a lot of pressure sometimes um, because trying to find your passion and your job and your purpose with the pressure of rent um, pushing that, that makes it really hard. So uh, get a job, get your bills paid. Um, and on the side of that, figure out what the daemon is saying to, to you and where it's leading you to. Um, so that's, uh, that's number four. Number five is, and this one's kind of related to, uh, to what I was saying there at the end, but your daemon may not care if you ever get rich. And so um, I, I say that when realizing everyone's daemon is different. Everyone's daemon kind of 
uh, pushes them and communicates with them differently and wants different things for them. So you may be the person uh, that your daemon is like, no, the, this guy's going to be rich. He had, you know, if he's going to share his gift effectively, he has to do so from a place of great wealth. And so, so that may be you. Um, in which case, you could ignore this one, I guess. But um, in general, I think I think the daemon's priorities are about making sure you're able to share what's inside of you. And so you can maybe assume from that, you know, there's a certain level of comfort, of, of bills paid, of um, being able to, you know, have some free time. Um, but even that's not for sure because, so does that mean people are in like really poor countries who are struggling to survive? Or, or if you're in America and you're struggling to survive, that you don't have a daemon, that that that's a privilege of... Uh, the middle class? Well, no, I, I don't think that's true. I, I think um, if you have a dame on, you have it regardless of where you are on this social or economic strata. Um, and the unfortunate, unfair thing about this life, which nobody ever said this life was fair, is that if you have a little bit more comfort in your life, it's sometimes easier to connect with the dame on. But, um, it's not, it's not strictly necessary. You know, if you, if your uh, passion, if your gift for the world is drawing, then, um, you know, you can get paper and pencil pretty easily. Um, even if it's just kind of taking it out of the supply cabinet at your office or, or at the library or something, you know, like those, those supplies are there. And so, um, the, I think probably the most reasonable action step on the front end um, is to just kind of try and divorce your thoughts about your daemon from economics, from your financial situation. That's not to say they can't uh, mingle and that they eventually won't need to mingle or that the daemon is completely just blind to that. But... Um, I, my advice would be to let the daemon show you over time what part it wants to play in that part of your life. Um, you know, for a little while, keep those in two compartments. Here's my daemonic passion. Here's my bills. And kind of keep those as separate as you can. And as the daemon becomes a bigger part of your life, if he wants to kind of say, hey, no, you know, we're... I'm ready to kind of stick my hand in, in your bill situation over here, then the daemon can do that. Um, but for for to begin, maybe just think about them separately. So uh, anyway, those are those are five things I think everyone should know about the daemon. Um, it, I, I'm loving that so many people have things to say in the comments. Um, uh, you know, I, clearly I love it when people are like, oh, you're, these are, this is great information. You know, that, that strokes my ego. But more than that, uh, when you share uh, your responses to questions I ask or ideas, that is uh, I, my, my ultimate goal for, for what I'm doing here is to build a community of people around this idea of the daemon. And so uh, do you agree with these five things? Do you disagree with them? And, and disagreement is always okay here. It's always encouraged. I'm not going to get mad or offended or yell at anybody. I may disagree with you and I may tell you I disagree with you, but it's always going to be from a place of love and acceptance. And uh, I will try to learn from what you're saying. And maybe, maybe if you're convincing enough, I'll completely change my opinion on the daemon. Um, and so... Anyway, uh, would love to hear in your comments your thoughts on these five uh, these five things. Uh, were they good? Were they right on? Are they off? Let me know. Okay, guys, talk to you soon.